Hello, my name is Rick Pearson. Welcome to Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, in previous episodes, we've talked about six types of believers that would be found in the last days. However, the seventh group of believers, known as the Church of Philadelphia, has a blessing coming that no other group of believers have experienced in Scripture. So stay tuned. You do not want to miss learning about one of the greatest mysteries in Scripture that could very well be fulfilled within our generation. Welcome back, folks. You know, throughout our programs, we've been discussing the seven types of believers that would be found in the last days. Since the Bible specifically states that Babylon the Great is the last kingdom to appear before the New World Order beast system begins, and because Scripture tells us that God's people are in Babylon, we can easily surmise that these seven types of believers obviously will exist in Babylon. Now, we've also discussed that out of the 53 descriptions found in Scripture concerning Babylon the Great, the United States of America is the only country in the history of the world who has met those descriptions. In other words, to identify these groups of believers, we have to not only look in the world, but specifically within North America to see what category we personally fit in. But why should we care? Because Jesus warned us that certain sins would void believers' chances of being spared a great tribulation. Those sins are as follows. Ephesus was believers who were not making God a first priority in the life. They had lost their first love. Sardis was believers who were doing works that were for their own benefits instead of allowing God to work through them to serve others. Jesus called their efforts dead works. Pergamos had believers who were involved in sexual immoral relations outside of holy matrimony. That would include adultery, fornication, and any sexual involvement between male or female, or a combination of both. Thyatira were believers who would be involved in activities that were rooted in the pagan religions of ancient Babylon. That would include pornography, immorality, witchcraft, drug abuse, and the shedding of innocent blood. Laodicea were believers who would be blessed financially, but were selfishly not using their first fruit finances to help others in needs. In other words, being rich in substance, but not being generous towards others, which Jesus referred to as not being rich towards God. Smyrna was a group of modern day believers suffering persecution, but were encouraged to stick with the faith and that great rewards were awaiting them in heaven. However, the seventh group of believers had avoided all of the shortcomings of the first six churches and met all the criteria for being a true disciple of Christ. Her name is the Church of Philadelphia. And Jesus warned all six groups of believers that unless they change their ways, they could lose the blessing that awaits the Church of Philadelphia. And that blessing would take place within a one-hour time period. In other words, it would come suddenly. To further explain this blessing, listen to this. To the Church of Philadelphia, Jesus says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no man can shut. I know that you have but little strength, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Because you have kept the word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of tribulation that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. It appears that the Philadelphia believers are differentiated from all the other churches previously mentioned. It does appear, however, that these believers will suffer some persecution from the synagogue of Satan. In other words, they have been tested even to the point that Jesus said, I know that you have but little strength. If you stand up for traditional marriage, you are called homophobic. Against Muslim terrorism, you are called Islamophobic. 
If you stand up for Israel, you are called apartheid racists. If you stand up for the life of the unborn, you are accused of having a war on women. If you believe Jesus is the only way to salvation, you are accused of being a narrow-minded bigot. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets before you. God will judge you based on what you know and how you put into practice what you have been taught. The more you know, the greater your accountability to obey his words. Welcome back, folks. Wow. Did you know that to whom much is given, much is required? What does that mean to us in North America? A nation founded upon biblical principles, a nation blessed by God to become the richest nation in the history of the world, the most technically advanced, highly educated civilization in the history of mankind. You know, former President Reagan called us a city on a hill where God's word is preached 24-7 over internet, radio, television, and multimedia. Just think of this program alone. Are you listening on television, on your computer, perhaps in your car, or even in the palm of your hands, utilizing our mobile app? If so, what is God speaking directly to you in these verses? You know, unfortunately, there are nations today where you can be put in prison for even having a Bible. And we have apps in North America that will read the Bible to you. We have technology that will literally give you the spoken word of God from the palm of your hand. And yet, the majority of people in North America, as well as the body of Christ, are totally clueless that they are living in the last providential nation on earth before a godless new world order comes into power. Thanks to traditional teaching, false prophets, and unlearned pastors standing in the pulpits of America, the word of God has been watered down, giving way to a woke, reprobate society that's not coming, folks. It's already here. The Antichrist agenda is manifesting in every level of society, funded by progressive governments, corrupted by godless leadership. But our kingdom is not of this world. According to what we've studied in previous programs concerning the seven churches, those who know the word of God will be judged more harshly if you are just a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. However, if you hear and do the word in these last days, there is a great reward or an open door awaiting the church of Philadelphia that no other generation has been given. But what exactly is the open door and what specifically does that have to do with us living in North America? In Revelation, we see a specific time correlation between the open door and the hour of tribulation that will come upon the whole earth. Now, you may remember that we already have studied that the Lord warned the believers in Babylon the Great to come out of her, my people, be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Remember also that Amos promised that surely the Lord will do nothing unless he reveal it to his servants, the prophets. Obviously, this scripture, Revelation 3.10, is warning us of something coming that has been shown to John as he prophesies about the end time. Specifically, it would appear by scripture that in one hour, everything on the earth would change dramatically. On one hand, a great deliverance of the believers of Philadelphia would take place, but on the other hand, a great tribulation would come upon the earth in one hour. So let's first talk about the tribulation that is coming. This one hour time sequence is mentioned several times in the book of Revelation, and the angel specifically ties it into the judgment of Babylon the Great. Revelation 14, 7 says, And he said with a loud voice, Fear God, give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And then in verse 8, another angel declares, Babylon has fallen, 
because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, three chapters later, an angel talks about a 10-nation new world order coming into power. The United Nations 2030, 2030 agenda, the new digital currencies being developed in 30 nations, the World Health Organization's global reach into Canada and the USA are all stepping stones towards this fulfillment. But it will only be completed at God's appointed time and within one hour, as confirmed by multiple times in the written word. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. And the ten horns that you saw will hate Babylon the great, and they will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. Therefore, her plague shall come in one day, death, mourning, and famine. She shall utterly be burnt with fire. The merchants will stand afar off in the fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city of Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment or punishment has come. For in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste, and all the shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors, and all those who trade in the, in an, in the sea stood afar off. These things shall come upon thee, Babylon, in one day. Loss of children, widowhood, the fire shall burn them, the merchants shall wander away, and none shall save thee. From all these verses, we can correlate four specific things that the angels have told us concerning the hour of tribulation. In one hour, a major judgment will be released by God. In one hour, the ten kings will be given power together with the Antichrist to form a new world order who we are told hates Babylon the Great. In that same one hour, these kings will carry out God's purpose to burn Babylon the Great with fire. All of these details are written clearly in the word of God by his servants, the prophets. They were delivered by an angel who spoke directly to John concerning the judgment of Babylon and the hour of tribulation that shall come upon the whole earth. In Thessalonians 5.3, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Ezekiel 13 says, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy out of their own hearts. They've seen vanity and lying divination, saying the Lord has said, the Lord has not sent them. Because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, and there is no peace. So don't expect false prophets in our nation to warn you of this sudden destruction. Jeremiah said this would happen in the latter days. Timothy warned they would come to test you and see if you would follow the word or follow the herd with itching ears who have no desire to open their Bibles and discern the signs of the times. Don't expect traditional academic teachers whose salaries come from traditional churches to warn you of what scripture actually says. They're too busy trying to pacify the sheep instead of feeding the flock. Everything will happen exactly as God's word has told us. For I'm God and there's none like me. I've spoken it. I will also do it. I have purposed it, and I will bring it to pass. So now we have determined what the hour of judgment is concerning Babylon the Great. But what is the mystery of the open door? Now, God not only has a special place for those who love him, he has a supernatural exit plan for those who will go through the open door. And it's a very special door one that only a chosen generation will receive. 
It's a door that literally defies the natural laws of nature. It's appointed unto every man to die, and after this the judgment. However, this open door is a blessing that literally overrules God's written word concerning any other generation of mankind. This supernatural door will not only bypass the hour of tribulation that shall come upon the, the earth, but it literally will bypass your appointed time to die. Now, the word rapture is not found in Scripture, just as the word Trinity in the United States of America is not found in, in Scripture. However, it is detailed in Scripture by Jesus using the following parables. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Now notice, Jesus is not talking about his second coming that takes place at the War of Armageddon, which successfully ends the seven-year tribulation period. In this parable, he says he will be revealed, but he emphatically states that not everyone is going to see him, nor will they be taken. He also compares that day to be likened unto the day that Lot came out of Sodom and it rained fire upon the earth. In other words, it was a day of judgment where some were delivered and others were not. Now in Matthew 25, there were 12 or there, excuse me, there were 10 virgins who were waiting for the bridegroom to come. Five had oil in their lamps and five had none. When the bridegroom showed up in the middle of the night, the five brides who had no oil left to buy some and they literally missed their own marriages. Now, when they finally got ready, the bridegroom was gone and the door was shut behind them so they could not follow. The open door blessing that comes to certain believers is further explained in 1 Thessalonians. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Corinthians says, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on imperishable, and the mortal put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? And O grave, where is your sting? This group of believers, the Church of Philadelphia, will be just like Elijah, who was caught up in a chariot and taken to heaven, and just like Enoch, who walked with God and was not. They are the bride of Christ that will never taste death. And this group fulfills the warning Jesus gave in Luke 21 regarding the rapture. Watch ye therefore and pray that you might be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And that escape will take place at the one hour initiation that begins the seven year tribulation. Now, one of the most glaring examples pinpointing the specific time sequence of the rapture happens after the rapture takes place. So stay tuned. You do not want to miss this teaching on the specific time sequence that unlocks the mystery of the open door and its direct correlation with the United States of America. Stay tuned. Theological seminaries have inundated churches preaching that America is not in the Bible. Prophecy teachers have regurgitated for years that America is not in the Bible. But what does the Bible say? Prophecy USA is proud to present a 30-page brochure filled with scripture debunking the biggest lie keeping the body of Christ in darkness today. America is fully detailed in scripture over 53 times. 
And now we want to put God's Word directly into your hands. America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled and her judgment is coming. For a gift of $15 plus shipping and handling, we will send you this amazing brochure. For a gift of $50, we will send you five brochures. For $100 or more, we will rush to you 10 brochures. And for a ministry gift of $500, we will send you both our books, The Hour That Changes Everything, and The Coming Exodus, plus 20 brochures for your friends, family, and relatives. Call today. Welcome back, folks. We've just studied a multitude of verses describing the hour that changes the world as we know it. In one hour, ten kings will form an alliance with the Antichrist and initiate the new world order. In one hour, a fiery judgment will be released upon Babylon the Great, allowing that new world order to begin its seven years reign. And in one hour, an open door will provide an escape route for a chosen generation of believers. In the twinkling of an eye, they will fulfill one of the greatest mysteries in Scripture by literally defying death. But how are we sure of the time sequence in uniting the open door rapture with the destruction of Babylon the Great, which we've already determined is the United States of America? After Revelation 18 describes the destruction of Babylon the Great, the following chapter provides all the evidence that demands a verdict. Revelation 19.1 says, After these things, the destruction of Babylon, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged Babylon the great, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give her honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Now in this verse, It specifically shows us that the marriage supper of the Lamb will not take place until Babylon the Great is judged. And that judgment will take place in one hour. The exact same hour of tribulation that will come upon the whole earth. And the exact same hour when the bride of Christ escapes through the open door, just as Jesus promised the believers of Philadelphia who were counted worthy. And it should be noted that this verse also confirms that the bride of Christ made herself ready. You know, Jesus said, pray that you might be counted worthy to escape the tribulation. Eternal salvation is a gift from God, offered to you freely by the death and resurrection of Jesus' works on the cross, not our works, lest any man should boast. However, to be counted worthy to escape through the open door and literally defy death is a totally different initiative. Revelation 19 continues, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. In historical Babylon, 600 BC, we have the story in Daniel 2, how King Nebuchadnezzar tested three young Hebrew boys because they would not bow to his golden image. So he cast them into a burning fiery furnace. Apparently, this king who ruled in the region of present-day Iraq had a barbaric ideological religion that decreed If you don't worship my God, you're an infidel and will suffer death by being burned alive in a burning, fiery furnace. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were three Jewish believers out of 50,000 Jews living in Babylon at the time. They refused to break the first commandment and would not bow to another God. They were thrown into a furnace to be literally burned alive, but God miraculously delivered them. Now, according to Daniel 3, a fourth man appeared in the flames, and the kings, to the king's utter astonishment, he said, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the furnace? But lo, I see a fourth man, loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth man is like unto the Son of God. The greatest miracle 
that ever happened in ancient Babylon is a prophetic foreshadowing of the rapture of the bride, which will happen in Latter-day Babylon as well as around the world. Remember, the same demonic spirits that rose during the time of ancient Babylon are rising again now within current Babylon the Great. And just as Nebuchadnezzar was spiritually manipulated to cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, the spirit of Antichrist and his ten-nation coalition will be spiritually manipulated to press some buttons and according to scripture, cast certain sections of this planet into a burning fiery furnace. Specifically targeted is the United States of America. But just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered from the flames, God will miraculously deliver the bride of Christ from the conventional weapons of modern warfare. The flames will have no power over your body, neither will a hair of your head be singed, for behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall be changed instantly. In the twinkling of an eye, this mortal will put on immortality and this corruptible body will put on incorruption. A trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive shall be caught up to meet him in the sky. The fourth man shall appear once again in the fiery furnace of Babylon's destruction, and only his chosen will take part in the first resurrection. That resurrection began 2,000 years ago. Matthew says, For behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs were open, and the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and came out of their tombs immediately after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians says, For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. So get ready, America, because something good is about to happen to you who believe. Get your house in order. Make Christ first in your life. Participate in the works of his kingdom. Give the first fruits of your financial blessings to those who are in need. When the rain descended down on Noah, Noah's family ascended up. When the fire came in in Sodom, Lot's family came out. And when the flames come down on Babylon the Great, the bride will go up. For he has spoken it, he will also bring it to pass. He has purposed it, and he will also do it. Just like Nebuchadnezzar declared 2,500 years ago, there is no other God who can deliver like this. So the battle's over, the victory's ours, and we win, folks. Folks, we're out of time. This is Prophecy USA. My name's Rick Pearson, and I'm reminding you that Jesus is alive and he's coming back much, much sooner than many people realize. Thanks for watching. See you next week on Prophecy USA. Shalom.